there's an odd thing that when you actually are travelling around Syria, Latakia, Tartus, um, Damascus, and further north than, than Latakia, and you listen to the news coming out of Washington, it's like Americans are living in this kind of fantasy world that bears no relation to planet Earth, where I'm trying to report. Um, and, and this is getting steadily worse. And I think one of the problems is, as I say, this parasitic osmotic relationship between journalists and power, our, our ever-growing ability, our wish to, um, you know, to, to rely on these um, utterly um, uh, bankrupt comments from various unnamed anonymous intelligence sources. And I'm just looking at a copy of the Toronto Globe and Mail, February 1st, 2013. It's a story about uh, al-Qaeda in Algeria. And what is the sourcing? U.S. intelligence officials said, a senior U.S. intelligence official said, U.S. officials said, the intelligence officials said, Algerian officials say, national security sources considered, European security sources said, the U.S. officials said, the officials acknowledged. I won't bore you. I've got another even worse example here from the Boston Globe and Mail, November 2, 2012. But, you know, we might as well name our newspapers. Officials say this is the, the cancer at the bottom of modern journalism, that we do not challenge power anymore. Why are Americans tolerating these garbage stories with no real sourcing except for um, very dodgy characters indeed?